Hey guys, it's Jan. I did a quick test over the last couple days on syncing a full node from scratch and measured the disk IO and activity of, of the system during that entire time. So I think it's really interesting to kind of look at that data and dig in a little bit deeper. That'll help us understand what the actual minimum requirements are for running a full node. So you can see here, we'll do a Chia Show S and we are fully synced and uh, the, the the way I actually measure the disk writes, I measure them two ways. So one, I always ask the drive. The drive has a smart log, and obviously the smart log works a little bit different on SATA versus NVMe, and I'll show you how to calculate both ways. But the, the drive always knows how many writes were done to it. So that's my always uh, you know way to look back and figure out what the amount of disk writes were I asked the drive. Uh, you can also, we're going to ask the system too, which is basically just looking at the total amount of time over uh, a time period in Grafana and we'll look at the average bandwidth and calculate the amount of disk writes through there. There are tons of different methods to do this. Um, this is just the one I happen to like. So you can see this total sync time took 30.6 hours. Uh, now the system I'm on is uh, a six core i5 and this is a i5-9400. Um, I don't think it supports hyper-threading, so it's just six six cores, and I think this uh, system does not have very much DRAM. <laughs> yeah, eight gigabytes of DRAM. So this is a pretty pretty bare bones system. Like this is not a not a high end system. Uh, this is just a random CPU I had laying around. My boot drive is a uh, Intel SSD 540 series. This was just an old SATA drive that came out in like. Uh, 2016, it uses the Sandforce controller, which was very, very popular on SATA SSDs in that time frame, uh, which has some interesting tricks, which I'll show you. But if you do a smudo, pseudo smart CTL A class, you can see SDA. This is just a Intel 540 series SSD. So this is a pretty, I would say, not a high end system, not a low end system either. Just, you know, you could buy the CPU for 100 bucks and it's on a cheap you know, H370 uh, motherboard, which I think is what my actual system name is, <laughs> or yeah, H370, uh, and uh, did eight gigs of RAM. So this is a pretty bare bones system. Uh, and I was able to sync the database in 30.6 hours. So if we zoom in here to this 30.6 hours, you can see it started out at CPU about 50%, drops down, um, and it stays right around, you know, 30 to 40%. Uh, so not a huge amount of CPU used uh, during the sync. And then you can see after after the sync is done, you know, there's almost no CPU basically for when it's just fully farming, the average CPU is about 1%. So if we go back and zoom back into this two days, um, you can see here, uh, we're gonna look at the disk IO activity because this is really interesting. Um, if we go look at this, the peak here was around 4,000 IOPS on this disk, and this is a SATA drive. So 4,000 IOPS is for reads, um, oh, sorry, this is uh, writes completed. So 4,000 IOPS for writes is maybe a lot for like a USB stick or like a lot for an SD card, but it's not a lot for a SATA SSD. So you'll see here uh, at the end where how I make my recommendation for the minimum node requirements, but uh, in this observation I have right now, a SATA SSD, you know, just a plain SATA SSD attached in Linux is perfectly fine for the database. There's, you don't need some high-end NVMe or anything. This does not look I.O. bound in, in the least bit. And then, so if we look at that same disk read and write data, the bandwidth data, uh, again, uh, disk bandwidth is IOPS times block size. So you can see that the graph looks exactly the same and that's absolutely expected. And it kind of climbs up, and there's the, the the dust storms. You can see maybe there's some peaking, but um, not not crazy amount. But the average disk bandwidth was 13.4 megabytes per second writes, and at maximum it hit about 35 megabytes per second. You can see here in this second kind of half, it's a pretty big chunk where it's almost about 20, you know 18 megabytes a second. So this is again this is nothing for a SATA SSD. Uh, but for an SD card, um, these a lot of these SD cards are rated at 10 megabytes a second sustained write. And I'll talk about why that sustained write bandwidth is really important for these small SD cards and why it's probably not a good idea to run your database for Chia on an SD card or a small USB because of this. So if we look back at this data, uh, I can look at this smart data and 
so on on this SATA drive, this happens to have um, two attributes, total LBAs written, and this is in 32 MIB chunks. Uh, and this is just, unfortunately, some of these old SATA drives, the Intel drives report them all kind of the same way, but uh, the SATA smart was not standardized. So you kind of have to go look up whatever device model you have and figure out what, what the right is. So I know that this value corresponds to the number of 32 MIB chunks that were written. And then here it says NAND writes and one GIB. So it actually gives you the NAND writes. Um, and so what I was able to do was basically just take a before and after. And I just took the smart before and took that exact value and took the smart after. And then I basically multiplied it by uh, 32 MIB and divided by 1024 to get GIB. And then uh, I basically did the before and after. So this was the after 3460, the before was 3013 and the difference was 479. This was at block height 77, uh, 770,000. So that was halfway through. At the very end, I went through and, and just that was like kind of the midway point and then did the total rights. And so you can see the after was 4402 and the before was 3013 as, as above. And so we've written about 1.5 terabytes of disk rights or about 1500 gigabytes. So, uh, and then you can see here, I calculate the total amount of time, 1.27 days or 30.6 hours. Uh, and so this is not a tremendous amount of data, but it's not a, it's not nothing. Um, so, you know, people are wondering, okay, why well, have a, an SSD that supports hundred TBW or 200 TBW or something? Is this a big deal, right? This is 1.5 TB. Well, one, it's mostly, uh, although the writes are random and small, the database size isn't huge. So you, if your drive's not full, this is not a problem. So when SSD's performances, the, the performance of an SSD degrades when, when the drive gets full because it makes garbage collection really hard. When, when the drive is full, you have to do a random write, you actually have to move data in that block somewhere else before you can erase the block to write new data. And this is called uh, write amplification or in, in SSDs, this process is called garbage collection. So this is really, really bad on a small capacity USB stick or SD card because this amount of data completely swamps the drive. You know, 1.5 terabytes on a you know 32 gigabyte or 64 gigabyte SD card or something just completely swamps the drive. It's gonna write over the full span of the drive and you're gonna get down to that whatever the rated sustained performance is, that 10 megabytes per second or whatever these crappy SD cards are. So that's why it's gonna be really hard. This workload is really tough um, because it's small block random write. Most of the writes, uh, as we'll look in here, um, the, the other way I find writes is through the, um, you know, if you want to look up kind of what the average block size was, you can do this iostat dash h dash x, and then we're gonna do it on my SDA. And you can see here the, uh, write kilobytes per second. This is 10.6 megabytes. This is just average, I think over a day or something. And then write request size, 8.6 kilobytes. So this is small block random write. This is not good for an SD card. It is not good for a hard drive. It is not good for a USB stick. Now this amount of data, the database size is 37 gigabytes uncompressed. And that's not a huge deal for like a 480 gigabyte drive. Um, it's, it's no sweat, especially when the drive wasn't very full. And so you can see back when we look at the actual uh, Grafana dashboard that this drive didn't break a sweat. There was uh, zero, basically zero IO weight um, you know, the whole time that the, we were not disk bound. We were not IO bound in this uh, database sync. So, so what that would suggest is that, you know, if I put a faster SSD in here, would it sync slightly faster? Well, I can do that test and that may be uh, one of the tests I do, but we're going to do a more interesting test in the next step, which is actually look at some of the proposed database changes that will go in uh, and see if that actually makes a big difference, uh, which it should, right? Because um, the database is very compressible. So compressing the blocks um, while they're being done will tremendously reduce the amount of disk writes required to sync the full node. Um, so this is uh, just some helpful data. If you are syncing a full node in Chia today, uh, I would definitely suggest getting the minimum requirements of uh, a SATA SSD. Yeah, it's, you don't need some super high-end SSD to 240 gig or 250 gigabytes, totally fine. Uh, but these little SD cards are not gonna cut it.
So if you are on a system that does not natively support SATA, you're going to have to use USB of some sort. Like if you're on a Raspberry Pi, you're gonna to have to use a USB SSD. Now I don't recommend the actual USB sticks, even though they're, they come in higher capacities, and there's a few reasons for that. If you buy one of these USB SSDs, like a Samsung T5 or T7 or some of these SanDisk ones, they have, uh, if you look at, you can just Google a review of whatever one you're looking at, and it will tell you kind of what controller is on there. And this Samsung T7 happens to have an AS Media ASM 2362 on there. So I just Googled that controller, and you can look up the specs. Now, there is no certification process for a USB to NVMe uh, controller. I, I know because I ran the NVMe certification process uh, for a long time at NVMe Express. Um, so it's kind of the wild west, So, but you find one that's popular, like if Samsung's gonna use this natively on their board, it's probably a pretty popular controller. Uh, and if you look at this controller, you can actually look at all the features on it, and there's a ton of features that only would make sense to somebody like me who's designed SSD products, but the one you're looking for is support trim command set. Uh, sorry, sorry, I can scroll down here. Now, uh, remember, trim is the way that the operating system has to tell the SSD that the data is not needed anymore. If you don't have the trim command, then the, the drive has no idea which data is valid or invalid. It just keeps writing data and keeps track of all the data until the host overwrites that LBA. So trim is insanely important to SSDs because it keeps the performance good, it keeps writing up down, uh, and keeps the garbage collection very efficient. Now, especially on a drive like in this workload, which we'll see is you know writing like about 1.5 terabytes of data. If you don't have trim, you are dead in the water. The drive will get completely overwhelmed to get down to whatever the sustained performance is at worst case, which is means the drive is full and it's in the worst case garbage collection because we're doing random writes in this blockchain sync. So this is really, really, really bad. <laughs> for a drive that doesn't have trim. You have to have trim so the operating system can, can basically tell, tell the drive uh, when the LBAs are not needed anymore. Now, trim in SATA is called uh, data set management. In SCSI or SAS is called unmap. And in NVMe, it's called deallocate. So what we're looking for here in this the USB natively supports SCSI as the command set. So these this controller is actually gonna take that SCSI unmap. When the operating system deletes a file, uh, it's going to take the the kernel is going to basically take that file and LBAs and turn that into SCSI unmap commands. It's going to send that down to this controller. This controller has to convert that, those commands into NVMe deallocate commands for the same LBA range, so that the SSD on the other side knows that the data is not needed anymore. Now, how well does this work? You're going to have to figure it out by, by controller. Now, I, I suspect that some of these really popular models, like the Samsung T5 and T7 that they test this. This is something very common in an SSD. But on some of these smaller USB sticks or an SD card, you just don't have the trim command available. So those things are gonna to get totally overwhelmed um, you know, right away if you're writing this much data. So uh, with that, if you're going to use a USB SSD, you know, I, I would highly recommend actually using a real SSD or you know, one where you actually look at the controller and it's kind of a popular NVMe to USB controller. Now, the other way I looked at the disk bandwidth, and this is, you know, there's probably more sophisticated ways to do this, but I just basically zoom out in Grafana, and I basically figure out, it is very easy to see that, you know, norm normally if you're running a test, you look at test time start and test time end, and you kind of look at, you, you kind of type them in manually, but here I'm just doing something kind of easy where I'm just basically selecting the data. It's very easy to see when the sync ends on this because it drops to basically zero. Uh, and and so if you do that, then, and you kind of zoom in here just to right where it ends, you can basically look at the average bandwidth and it was average bandwidth of 13.4 megabytes per second. And then we can look at the start time here, end time here, and basically input that here, start time, end time, and then and basically just look at the difference. And then I basically take that number and uh, input it into, uh, you know, basically the uh, mega, uh, the total amount of seconds uh, for the, um, uh, yeah, basically the, the total amount of seconds that, that this test requires. So if we basically copy paste this here, let's make sure this is the right value. Uh, total amount of data written, if we do calculate it the, by hand is uh, 1479 gigabytes. The actual data the SSD reported was 1491. So these are really, really close. Um, 
you can see that's expected. Uh, the file system and operating system should report the amount of data written exactly the same as, as the drive. So uh, again, uh, yeah, it's just a, a fun little test and I'm gonna follow this up with a video very soon on the V2 database uh, schema, which is being developed right now actively. So I'm gonna test like a, a beta build of that and see how it goes. But the last thing I'm gonna leave you guys with is if you go look at this blockchain, uh, LA, uh, let's see, slash, uh, dot Gia, oops, Ainet DB, you can see the blockchain is 37 gigabytes today. Well, that data is very compressible. If you compress it with Z standard or any other uh, compression algorithm, uh, you know, that database gets at least 50% in size and sometimes down to like 65% compression if you do a higher compression rate. So uh, you'll see this is some of the tricks that are gonna be used to reduce the database size in the future. The data happens to be very compressible that is in the blocks. Uh, so this will help reduce the total amount of database size and the writes over time. Um, the last trick, okay, I promise this is the last thing. I know we, we talked about a lot of lasts, uh, but if you look at this drive, uh, remember if we looked at the smart CTL, uh, this has uh, something called NAND writes, and you can see if we do the NAND writes in one GIB, it tells us the NAND writes before and after. This is a ridiculously small number. And if you look at this difference in, in numbers, um, you basically, uh, I have this NAND writes before and NAND writes after, and I converted it from uh, GIB to TIB. And if you, if you take the difference in this, uh, the, the drive itself only saw 0 0.264 TIB or 264, uh, oh, I guess, let's see, if we do that times uh, 1024, we'll get GIB. So 271 GIB, okay, how is that possible? Okay, well, this SSD controller this is the Sandforce controller that was very popular on these SATA drives, actually has inline compression in it. <laughs> so the database happens to be very, very compressible. So uh, this is really interesting. You can look at the data on the drive and the actual drive, this is the actual number of NAND writes that, that the drive had to do. And it was less than the total number of host writes. Now this is only ever possible on a drive that supports compression. Typically this is not possible <laughs> on any other drive. Uh, but these old Sandforce drives happen to support inline compression, which I think is really cool. Now, unfortunately, that feature never became super popular for just because data is all over the place and most of the data people store, that's not operating system data, is not compressible. It's movies and photos and whatever, uh, what have you. But um, I think this was, this was a really cool feature on this old drive that uh, you can see here. Uh, but if you wanted to find this number on an NVMe drive, you just do the same pseudo smart CTL dash A and then look at your NVMe drive, and it will tell you uh, host, uh, unit data units written. And now this data units written, you multiply it by 512 and then times 1,000, and then you get the total amount of bytes, and you can convert that bytes into gigabytes or terabytes or whatever. And that's a super easy calculation. Now, Smart Control does it for you. You can see it just tells us how many writes are on this drive.